to your chairs, bring your chocolate, bring your coffee with you. Get ready to have a real good time. Bow, 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 bow. All right, too sexy for my vest. Too sexy for my vest. Too sexy. Too much? Never. Remember, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. All right, a lot of stuff to cover, and I'm always torn because I want to just download this stuff right to the hard drive. Fortunately, we're not living in the matrix yet, although I refer to the matrix quite a bit. Google this Skynet. Yes, we do live in the matrix. See, part of my job, in addition, and it's a fun topic. I mean, tonight's topic is all about relationships, and, and again, we always, the problem is we take ourselves way, way too seriously, and that's the problem. Part of my job is to help you get that neuro-linguistic stick out of your butt <laughs> long enough to have a good time, right? We gotta get fun, we gotta get playful, right? And so a lot of what I do is designed to shock you, right? It's designed to, to just goose you and really understand that if you wanna be charismatic, you wanna be attractive, you wanna, you wanna be a people magnet, then you have got to be the kind of person that can suck them out of that world, that reality that they live in, and give them something different, something exciting. Remember this, okay? The average human being goes nowhere fun, does nothing cool, watches YouTube, fantasizes about being on YouTube, or not, right? And lives lives, to, to quote, to, to, to butcher Thoreau, live lives of quiet desperation, okay? And we are desperate, we are desperate for anyone who can bring that monotony to an end, even for a little bit. And if you don't believe me, I'll ask you one simple question. Who makes more money? Educators or entertainers? Exactly. Because their whole craft, and actors, actors are the best hypnotists on the planet. Do you know why? Their whole craft is designed to reach into your world, pull you out of yourself and suck you into their world, to take you on a journey emotionally, physically, cognitively, to engage all of your senses. And when you do that with another human being, they will hold on for dear life. I'm gonna give you the secret tonight. I'm gonna give you the passcode to the human nervous system. Think of it like the skeleton key that unlocks the entire neurology. I'm gonna give it to you in several different forms. It's the same thing, just said differently. Does that make sense? Here's the most basic way to understand it. The most important words, everybody's always wondering what the words are. You know, what are the right words? What are the right words? What are the right words? What do I say? to get somebody to connect and to, to feel understood and to really bond with me. The most important words, I'm just waiting, I'm just building you up on this one. The most important words that a human being can hear are the ones that just came out of their mouth. <laughs> it's literally that cut and dried. I have had whole conversations for hours where all that I've done is say the words back to the person who just said them. And they agree with me like I've just read their mind. <laughs> you say the words back. So it's like mirroring kind of thing? Yes, yeah, like mirroring. <laughs> that was a mirror. You have no clue what just happened. <laughs> See what I mean? Felt perfectly natural, didn't it? It works just like that. As long as you're coming from the right place. Everything I'm gonna teach you has tremendous, tremendous potential for misuse. I don't teach those people. It's never, it's never necessary, if you understand the technologies that I teach, to lie, to another human being or mislead them. It's not necessary because everything that you need to get that human being to do 
what you want them to do, they will tell you. They will give it to you. And as long, as long as you connect what they want to doing what you want in a way that they recognize it, they will give you what you want, usually out of default. And they will usually think it's your own, their own idea. Okay? Now, on a more abstract, theoretical level, it's not actually theory, this is how it work. But, going a little bit more abstract, the, the human nervous system is moving through the world <coughs> looking for itself. Remember that checklist we talked about earlier? Everything a human being is looking for, they are projecting through their behaviors, through their words, through their gestures, onto the world around them, and they're looking for the matches. To the degree that they find a match, they bond. They fall into rapport, they fall into connection. You follow me? It happens on a physiological level, a hormonal level, a reptilian level, a, lim a limbic level, and a neocortical level. And it follows pretty much in that order. Okay, I have a video that I show in a lot of my trainings where I have 30 or 40 distinct or dis uh, separate metronomes on a table, and they're all swinging at different frequencies. And within two and a half minutes, every single metronome starts vibrating at the same rate. Okay? Those metronomes are analogous to your nervous system. Every human being in this room is a metronome. And they will fall into synchronization. They will fall into step with one another. It's just a matter of time. And once you understand that, we talk about rapport a lot, you have to understand that rapport can't not happen especially in a group this big. It's happening all the time anyway, okay? The largest rhythmic source of movement in your body is your heart, like a metronome. It's beating. Now, most of you don't know this, but you can look it up. The human heart radiates an electromagnetic field that can be measured with instruments eight feet in diameter from the human body. Your nervous system, specifically your proprioceptive nervous system, has six different types of data, six channels of information that it monitors, one of which is electromagnetic fields. So if you're standing or sitting next to somebody whose heart is beating at a certain rate and he's sending out a little electromagnetic pulses with a certain rhythm that are being picked up by another nervous system, what do you think happens in a very short time? That's right. It can't not happen. And once it does, the rest of the system follows it. This is when you start to reach that level where you start finishing other people's sentences, you know what they're going to say before they say it, because every part of you is resonating at the same frequency, and that information translates. Okay? How long does it take? It depends, but uh, if I could take 41 separate metronomes without a nervous system, it happens in under two minutes. The trained nervous system can be instantaneous the trained nervous system. The difference is, is you have to know, now remember, a lot of these synchronizations don't pass the conscious mind. There's a firewall between the subconscious mind and the conscious mind. Now in, in remote viewing and, and uh, some of the advanced uh, neuropsychology terms or neurophysics, they call this the lemon. And the lemon is literally a firewall that keeps the unconscious processes from filtering up and, and directly guiding the conscious mind. The way that happens, uh, the way things get bypassed is through the body. So if I can generate something in my subconscious, I mirror it through my body, I will affect you this way. If I can close the circuits with my words, then everything matches. Now that gets a little bit advanced. Just remember, the human being that you're communicating with is looking for themselves. They don't consciously know it. So if all you do is give their words back to them, they will fall into sync with you. They will feel understood by you in a way that's dramatically powerful. 
Okay? How many women here have ever used the phrase, he just doesn't get me? <laughs> How many men have ever heard that phrase, he just doesn't get me? Or you just don't get it? Right? This is how they get God. This is how they get God. I'm going to give you the passcode to relationships, too. Would that be okay? Yes, sir. You sure? Yes. It's not exactly flirting. <laughs> is that right? Yes, you sure? Yes. All right. If I get hate mail because of this, all right. Here's how it works. I told you guys that I'm a, quote, expert in conversational hypnosis. Well. Remember that the, 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 the bread and butter language patterns that I teach are so powerful because they are the building blocks of human thought. Literally, if you were to listen to the structure of a person's words coming out of their mouth and look at the structural components of you know, what word comes before what, what's the actual process that it's doing, you would find these core language patterns that I teach are, are mirrored in the structure of your thoughts. There are two primary language patterns that most of our reality is based on. They are not the most powerful, but they're right up there. One is called cause and effect. The other is called complex equivalence. Okay? Now, they both have a similar structure, but the differences make a difference. And the reason I bring this up is not to teach you about hypnotic language. Language by itself is inherently hypnotic anyway. It's the most intuitive thing we learn. But there's an X causes Y. This is almost like algebra, right? X is something that is true. Y is something we want them to do. All right? That's as much as I'm going to teach about this. In terms of gender relationships, men predominantly think in cause and effect relationships. Okay? Uh, I'll give you a prime example. Uh, one of the examples I often give is Let's say little Johnny, you're married, and little Johnny has a soccer game. And you know, as a father, that it's vitally, vitally important that you need to be at little Johnny's soccer game because he's your son, right? But you're having a hell of a day at work, right? Asshole clients, asshole boss, asshole traffic. So you're 20 minutes late, you get to Johnny's soccer game, they're already, they're already packing up, your wife comes up to you with that look in her eye. You know, the one that says, you're going to pay for this motherfucker and you don't know it yet, right? And you go, honey, I'm so sorry. The clients ran late at work. The boss made me stay late. Traffic was a bitch. And that's why I was late. I'm so sorry. And she looks at you with that look in, your eye, in her eyes. And she goes, if you loved your son, you'd have been here. <laughs> Sound familiar? Or a structure thereof? What you've just seen is a common conflict between cause and effect and complex equivalence. In a cause and effect relationship, traffic was bad, therefore I was late. But that's not how the genders think. Men think that way. We're very simple, ladies. That's the problem. We're too fucking simple. You are complex. You are deep. Because you think ten, predominant, now both genders use both, both patterns, but there's a predominance in the world according to David. Use it or not, it's up to you. Complex equivalence is an X equals Y relationship, where X and Y, even though they're different words, have the same meaning. So in the cause and effect world, I was late to Johnny's soccer game because of traffic, because of my boss, because of the clients. There's a causal relationship where one led to the other. But the female gender doesn't necessarily perceive the world that way. Remember their socialization. Remember their evolution. They thrive. They survive based on understanding what the significance of a behavior is, what it means in their world. Therefore, gentlemen, every single thing that you do has a meaning in their world. And if you don't interact with them on the meaning level, you are going to get neutered. <laughs> Metaphorically, and sometimes literally. And every female, I'm, I've seen how every female is going, right? They're like bobbleheads because they get it. Guys, we don't because we're simple, right? I'm not bagging on you. We got to understand this. We got, I got to bring it to your attention so you can make an informed choice. You can choose to go back to doing what you were doing. 
and continue to get the results that you're getting. Or you can understand how they perceive the world so that you can change and get a better result. This is also the core of when they say he just doesn't get, you just don't get it. That's the problem. You're thinking in cause and effect terms. I did X, which caused me to do Y. They're thinking X equals Y. If you start relating to them on cause and effect terms, you will dramatically transform your relationship. But it takes effort because we're not used to thinking this way and we're sure as hell not used to changing how we communicate to fit the other person, which is why most of you will not use this <laughs> because it takes energy. And at the reptilian level, the neurology responds to critical thinking, having to monitor emotions, control them, change how you think and how you feel, the same way it does to pain. And they've proven this. They've taken, you, does someone want to let her in or is she trying to signal somebody? She's got a pig. Hi, pig lady. Pig lady. <laughs> Oh, you turn into a pig? <laughs> You're a were pig? Yeah. Were pork. <laughs> All right. So, so you've, you've, you've run across this complex equivalence idea many times where you've heard sayings on t-shirts, time is money, love is freedom, right? They're very simple examples of what we call a complex equivalency. And it's important that when you relate to the other gender, that you speak to them in the way that they're going to sort for reality. If you're willing to do that, you will dramatically lubricate the communication process and you will feel more understood. Does that make sense? Now, I'm gonna give you one extra bonus. Anybody here know who John Gottman was? Or is, I should say, okay? John Gottman is probably, aside from Virginia Satir, the most famous marriage and family therapist out there. He ran a project called the Love Lab many years ago. I think it might even still be around. And has anybody here ever read the book Blink by Malcolm Gladwell? Okay. In that book Blink, which is a study of how uh, intuitive thinkers operate, there's a couple of chapters devoted to Gottman's work. Because what Gottman did was he would take couples and he had this computer algorithm that he developed that would monitor the nonverbal interactions and the verbal interactions of people. And with a 93 or 97 percent, I can't remember the exact, but it was in the high 90s uh, percentage, he could predict in 15 minutes of conversation how likely that couple was to divorce. 93 to 97 percent based on the verbal and nonverbal interactions. And most people left it at that, but the guy by the name of John Medina, I learned from him on one of his, on his book called Brain Rules, he talked about another study that Gottman did, which I don't think got nearly as much press and it should have. He asked a second question later on. He said, well, if I can accurately predict the variables that will cause or lead to the destruction of a marriage with a 93 to 97% accuracy rating, can I in fact sort for a variable that if that element or elements is present, the marriage makes it? By the way, most, both breakups are initiated by women, in case you didn't know that. 60% okay. of approaches initiated by women. Most, I can't remember the exact percentage of breakups initiated by women. We need to understand that, right? Because we're helpless guys, we're clueless, right? Not after this. Every woman on the planet is going to be looking for you. Why? Any idea? Ladies, why might every guy, every woman on the planet might be more interested in the guys in this room after tonight? Because they might have a clue. Have a clue. <laughs> you remember what I said at the beginning? I started talking about the checklist. If you met a guy that could touch you in exactly the right way, at exactly the right time, that said exactly the right thing to you in a way that you felt completely understood, that could take you places you've only ever fantasized about and then take you even further. What would you not do for that guy? Guys, that's where you're going. You're the prize. Ladies, you're the prize as well. I'm gonna write this down, ABT. ABT, always be testing. 
Ladies do this automatically. Guys, we need to do it more. We gotta be testing for who are the unique, or who are the, the keepers, and who are the unique fixer-upper opportunities. <laughs> and who are that, oh hell no, category, right? Nobody in this room wants to be their partner's therapist. And yet many times that's the relationship we find ourselves in, right? No, 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 no. That's why you must test the person you're with in the right way so that they can self-select into your world or out, right? And that's where we're going. But this is where we need to start because I'm going to assume that if you've gone through all the time and energy to create a relationship, you actually want to keep it. Would that be true or not true? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just check it because sometimes people just want to rack them up like notches on their bedpost, right? <laughs> Or in their lipstick case, as Pat Benatar seems to say. God, have I dated myself yet again? Oh, I'm, I'm so old. What's that? Someone said something. I heard it. Damn you. Oh, I guess you guys want the variable, huh? Yeah. You ready? Sure. I'll tell you tomorrow. Now, here's how it works. And it goes directly to their own words and this. I'm going to use the words I learned from John Medina in the video he talked about, and then I'll try to maybe clarify it a little bit. Here's what happens if the man can communicate to his partner, his woman, in such a way that she feels, she perceives that he has been positively affected by her good words and intentions, the marriage makes it. That's it. She successfully changed. Well, that's the rub. Because nowhere in that sentence does it say that he actually, actually has to obey her. He just has to signal to her that she gets it, that he gets it. She just wants to be heard. You heard that. He just doesn't hear me. I want to be heard. I'm talking to you at the top of my lungs. What are you not fucking hearing? Ready? This is what they're not hearing. They're not hearing the meanings. They're not hearing their words. Let them hear their words. And magic happens. Now, do it sincerely, non condescendingly, right? Don't be sitting in your head giving her her words back saying, I wish this bitch would just get to the point. <laughs> Don't be doing that shit. Bad idea. No, 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 no. Right? Be honest, be sincere. When you do, and when you can fake sincerity, you got it nailed, I'm telling you. <laughs> no, but, but seriously, if you, could, if you come from that place, the sincere desire to connect, and you utilize these methodologies, it is dramatically powerful. I can't tell you the kind of influence that you wield in that human being's life and how connected to you they become, right? Mm hmm Yes. You know? <laughs> I wasn't looking for the money, but... I mean, but I was. When, you're, when you say that, what it makes me think is just that that's because you, as a man, it's not fake for you to do that. You are actually connected to that person. Mm hmm You're actually right. That. Yes. It's not just making them think that you're it, connected it's, it's interesting that you say that because to the... You know, when I was working with... What's your name again? Lawn. Lawn. When I was working with Lawn, and I was working with a couple other people, and you see me do this, and you hear me reflect their words back, you guys think it's funny because it's so blatantly obvious to you. But they have a completely different experience of it. Completely. Yes, sir. Pass the mic. I, it's just so we can hear because I get complaints. Okay, so what exactly do you do when the girl says something? What exactly do I do when the girl says something? Yeah. Yeah. Or well, a guy, yeah. You know, like when they're, when they're pissed off about something. Or... Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a great one. When they're pissed off about something, uh, what you do besides giving their words back to them is you get pissed off too at the exact same thing they're pissed off at. <laughs> yeah. And if you can get madder about it than she is, she calms down. <laughs> No, not really. Okay. Not really. But you do have to take on her perspective. 
long enough to understand, which women are trained to do from the time they come out of the womb. We are not, as men. We are designed, I assert dominance, boom, me king. Now you follow and train with me, because I'm the head, of the, I'm the king, right? That's how we're taught. That's our socialization, right? And that's also part of the problem that women are having nowadays. Pass the microphone while I continue to talk. Is gender roles have changed so much in the past 20 or 30 years that guys don't know how to be guys anymore. And I'm not, look at me, and I'm not saying that women don't deserve what they have in society. I absolutely believe they do. We solved a lot of problems for women over the past 20, 30 years. But we created a whole lot more, and we have to deal with those, too. Yes? I don't know if it's changed. It's just that somehow men have lost their chauvinism, or their, not their chauvinism, their... Their masculinity. Oh, the, their role in society. Their ball. Their balls, yeah. Their, 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 their You're absolutely right. Yeah, they, don't, they don't know. They you hear this, guys? Yeah. They don't know what they have to do with now. And, and it's like, it's like they don't have them. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know how to be men. That's because they're lazy. <laughs> All right, so let this gentleman here first. One lesson at a time before we get into the dialogue. I love this part. Well, I beg to differ. I, I, I stand up for myself. But that also gets into this gray area when you say agree mm -hmm. with what they're saying. But I don't feel that that's who I am. I'm not, I'm not being sincere. That OK. I'm, then acknowledge what they say using their words, and then go and. You'll never go wrong acknowledging what they said using their words, and then take them where you need to take them. Because until you signal understanding and comprehension, they're going to interpret whatever comes out of your mouth as resistance. Okay. So acknowledgement. Acknowledge. There's always something in what they said that you can agree with. Even if you know, I see that, I, I understand that you're truly upset about XYZ. Because she just said, I am pissed off about XYZ. I can see that you're really upset about XYZ. Yeah. And you'll see that. You'll be, yeah. And then they'll give you more information. For years, guys, I'm telling you, and getting some editorial guys, pass the microphone down to this end. For years, when I had my martial arts school in California, this is how I signed up people. Moms could call for their kids. They go, ring, ring. Hello, this is a Coral Springs Martial Arts Academy. This is David. How can I help you? Hi, my name's Arlene. I'm looking for karate lessons for my 10-year-old son, Jason. Oh, hey, Arlene. So you're looking for karate lessons for your 10-year-old son, Jason. Yeah! <laughs> Great. Well, tell me a little bit about Jason. What's going on with Jason? What, can, you know, what kind of karate are you looking for? Well, Jason's a little small for his age. And, you know, and he says he's a smart kid. But uh, you know, he's, he's young, and I'm afraid the kids might, might pick on him, and I want him to be a little bit more focused. Oh, I see. So Jason's a little bit young for his age. You're afraid the kids might pick on him a little bit. But he's really smart. Yeah. Perfect. We've got a class designed directly for people who are you know, kind of small, but who need a way to protect themselves. Now, whether they're really, really intelligent like Jason, or you know, just average, this is a class that is ton of, it's taught in a simple, fun, easy way that helps prevent people from being bullied because they're small. Now we have a couple of, uh, we have a free introductory program that we, that we have where we offer uh, three pri free, pre free private classes and a couple and a free uniform where we teach kids like Jason exactly how to you know, fend off those bullies, to keep from being picked on, and to exert himself or exert himself in a way that you know, allows him to stand up for himself and feel more comfortable. We have a, a slot available at 6.30 on Thursday and we have one at 5 p.m. on Friday, which is easier for you. I think, I think 6.30 on Thursday because then I can pick him up on my home from work. Great, we'll pencil Jason in and we'll see you there. Boom. And I promise you, that was the best conversation that woman had from any martial arts school that she has called. Why? I listened. That's the key. We think that because we're giving their own words back that this is somehow artificial. It isn't. It is a more intimate, attentive, pro conversational process than anything that most people have ever encountered. Huh? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Talk to this lady right here. She's a survivor of my rapid attraction secrets workshop. Put the whammy on a guy, I never saw it coming. Anyway, be that as it may. Uh, but yes, if you're a human being with a pulse and a nervous system, this will work on you. It can't not, even when you know it's being done. As long as you're coming from a sincere place. 
If you're coming from that sincere desire to connect and communicate with another person, it's no longer a trick. It's no longer something you're pulling on somebody. It's something you're doing with somebody because you truly want to understand them and get to know them better. Now, that, what we do with that understanding, that's where the rubber hits the road. That's where we get into that always be testing phase, which brings us to the three magic questions. Um, and three magic questions, we're gonna give you the, the Reader's Digest version. I have whole videos of this on YouTube, but um, three magic questions is a conversational framework that allows you to walk up to a complete stranger initiate a conversation, and within 20 minutes, have them on the verge of falling in love with you, and know more about them than their best friends know. And all during that process, you're gathering information that lets you decide if it's time to eject, or if you want to hook them or her, right? Now, I have to warn you, this was a conversational framework designed for women, for women to be used on men. It is not fair. That's the test. Okay. In fact, in, uh, a bunch of my other clients got a hold of this process. Uh, a bunch, I, I consult with personal injury attorneys all over the world on uh, how to influence juries and courtrooms and judges and things like that. My trial attorney's got a hold of this three magic questions protocol and literally putting the whammy on juries, uh, making the juries fall in love with them, and literally had expert witnesses waiving their attorney-client privilege in order to answer their questions. I have it on video. That's how powerful this is. And that's just the framework. If you're doing the body language stuff, we talked about it in the first part of the meetup first, it's even more unstoppable. And we have full courses on that, and we can talk about those later. But let's go about 3MQ. 3MQ goes like this. Three levels of question. These are categories of question. Location, occasion. Level one. Level two. Career passion. Level three. early childhood experiences. David? Yes? Uh, does this have to do kind of when you, uh, all I can say is I relate to this for what you just said to when I meet people who matter, I'm interested in them as a date or just mm -hmm. this is a context when I, it feels like I'm on a job interview all the time. Mm -hmm. Is that part of this you're still trying to figure out? Well, the problem is when people feel, it, the, the reason that it feels like a job interview, A, there's probably not a lot of rapport there, B, they're not using your words, and C, they're not softening the questions that they ask. So it's, it's very abrasive and it's very blunt. It seems like an interrogation. Yeah, because they're not, they're, they're coming in too, too direct. Guys, tattoo this on your forehead. If you, <laughs> if you want to excite a woman faster, go slower. <laughs> if you want to excite a woman more directly, be indirect. It's like you read the playbook. You bastards! True or not true, ladies? Right? Remember, guys, predator, see it, kill it. Right? It's very linear. That's not how they work. It's not how they work. Right? But if you understand the strategy, you can get what you want faster by giving them what they want slower. You understand that? And that's pretty true at every level of interaction. Okay? But again, that's not this course. Tease, tease, tease. Three magic questions. Now, going back to, what was your name again, Miss? Amy. What Amy was saying about it sounding like an interrogation. The reason it sounds like an, her job interview. The job interviews are interrogations. They're just in a nicer frame. The secret, though, is that you have to soften the questions. You have to soften the questions because you have different kinds of reactants that rear their ugly head. And again, I don't, there's, I'm throwing out all these little tidbits here and there, and I'm sorry for that. But 
One of the things that happens is we go through this little pushback phase, this little pushback visceral response. Anytime we experience an attempt at influencing us that we didn't invite or ask for. And one of the ways that people use NLP badly is that even though the techniques themselves are powerful and they're effective, they also, because if you, if you don't set them up properly, they're so powerful that they signal that, that's, that something's happening, that something's being done, and the body doesn't like that. Okay. Uh, Long, can I, can I use you for a second? This is a metaphor, even though it's true at the, at the, uh, the physiological level. That's no, all right. I don't want to shake your hand, motherfucker. Right. <laughs> no. Lon is my friend, kind of. We kind of pass each other often. He is one of the, the movers and shakers in World Ventures. So if you guys want to get really cool vacation deals, talk to Lon and his good partner over here. But now I'm going to make Lon my little puppet. He's going to be my meat puppet for a moment. All right? And I'm going to do this to explain. I'm going to, I'm going to demonstrate it on a physiological level. But I want you to understand that the same exact phenomena is happening on a psycho-emotional level, on a decision or behavioral level. If I push on Mon, he's kind of solid. He doesn't really want to move. And he kind of wants to go, fuck you, motherfucker. Right? I push on him, he wants to push back. You ever have that experience where someone's pushing us to do something, and even though we know it's in our best interest, there's this little, I call it the fuck you factor. <laughs> Say, fuck you, I know it's the right thing, and I still ain't going to do it. <laughs> right? Or I pull on Mon and he doesn't want to move. Why? Because it's one machine exerting its will on another machine. Right? But if I bond with Lon, I love on Lon. <laughs> so now we're no longer David and Lon. We're Dawn. <laughs> Which ironically is my wife's name. But when I do that, and I dissolve the barriers between self and other, then an interesting thing happens. And he doesn't think to resist. That was weird, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Give him a big round of applause. Did you come to my house? <laughs> you guys like that, don't you? I got more of that shit, trust me. You have not even begun to tap into a tenth, a tenth of the power latent in your body and your nervous system. There is so much that you're capable of. If you could see yourself as the way I see you, I know we're here for fun and for flirting and all these wonderful things, but you're so magical. There's so much that you can do if you just ask the right questions and get off your ass. Get your body engaged. Magic is real and it's in you. So think about that. The most important words a person can hear are the ones that just came out of their mouth. The, human, the nervous system of every human being on the planet is looking for itself. To the degree that you match that checklist, the barriers to intimacy drop, and you get more excited, more connected, more aroused, and more pleasure faster. Remember that women, every, guys, everything you do in their world has a meaning. So don't just justify what you did by X. Find out what what you did means to them and ally yourself with that. Sidebar, it doesn't mean she won't still be pissed at you. <laughs> However, here's the next part of that whole argument process. Ever come on? How many people here are married? Not many. Okay. That's another class. <laughs> no. But anybody here ever been in a relationship with an opposite, a member of the opposite sex? Ladies, let me ask you if this is true. You had a shitty day at the office. You've handled all your problems. He comes home. You start telling him about your day, and he starts telling you how to fix all that shit. <laughs> Look, guys. Here's the point. The female neurology needs to vent. When they come home, when you come home, when they come home, when they start telling you about their day and all the problems they encountered, they've already fixed them. They've already solved them. 
They just want to vent for you, on you for a little while. If you let them vent, you will live in paradise after you shower the slime off of you. <laughs> right? If you just let the system depressurize. Didn't share a better word? You could say share if that's you know, what your word is. Yes, we have a question back here. Pass the magic microphone. Pass it, pass it, faster, faster, faster. You guys haven't followed this? Is this useful? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I was seeing the guy that comes to me, he would say, I don't deserve this kind of treatment. Ah. So, where is that? Um, well, first of all, it's because he, the guy doesn't understand what's actually happening, so he thinks it's all directed at him. He's applying it to himself. She's yelling at me because she's mad at me. Guys, do you really think it that way? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Guys, raise your hands if that's true in your world. Okay, so let's say we're, we're venting about another person, we're thinking another name. Why would you guys self-internalize that? I don't know why. You'd have to ask God. I don't make the rules. You're stupid in a good way. We don't understand that the, the you gotta understand when guys, again, this goes back to neuroscience. This is all things you can do. When a guy gets uh, stressed out, he becomes very global. He, become, he, he just wants you to get to the bottom line. When the female neurology gets stressed out, they get more detailed. They get more specific, okay? So if, if a guy comes home and maybe he's had a stressful day and the first thing he hears is what's coming out of your mouth, you've just thrown wood on his fire which have shifted his perceptual filters, he sorts by, con by cause and effect. His rational factor has checked out, right? Because you've added stress to an already stressed system. He doesn't have the resources to apply critical thinking to what you're saying because, because men just want to fix things because that's what we do. That's what we do. There's a problem, we fix it. You come to us with a problem, we're gonna go kill it. Usually that solves it. Right? If we agree basically, okay, I don't want you to fix anything, just listen. Okay, I wouldn't use that word though, don't use don't. But that's going okay, on. but same concept, yeah. right? Make it clear as not much, right? Mm -hmm. In the very beginning. It gets really complicated really quick, doesn't it? Okay, yeah. Yeah. My point is, is you automatically assume, and this is the projection thing we talked about earlier, you automatically assume that the human being you're talking to, that even though their plumbing is different, operates exactly the same way you do. And so they get things about you that they don't because they don't perceive the world the same way. Conversely, they don't, you don't get them because they perceive the world differently, right? We need to create that bridge of understanding that allows us to translate. We need to understand the dynamics of what we're seeing. Guy walking in right out of the blue to a boom and just explodes all over him, in spite of what he consciously knows, usually the vehemence and the volume and the amplitude of that emotional release overwhelms his critical factor. And all he wants to do is save you. That's what we're doing. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get that. Ladies, when you vent at us and you tell us about your problems, all we wanna do is fix it for you. Because you're important to us. We don't realize you've already fixed it. You get it. We don't realize it. And we insult you inadvertently by telling you how to fix it. Because we assume if you're complaining about it, it's still a problem. You understand? We make an assumption. We don't understand. You're more than smart enough. You've probably already solved your shit six different ways. You just want somebody to spew on for a while. Right? Now, how does that go back to this whole argument thing? After you've gone through the argument resolution process, you're still in your refractory period, so you gotta be careful. But remember, even if you were the source of the argument and you've resolved the argument, she still needs to vent. How many guys have had this experience? You've gone through the argument process, the knockdown, the drag out, right? You've apologized, she's accepted your apology, and then for the next 10 minutes, she kicks your ass again. <laughs> yes. Okay, right? Yes? Okay, I don't need a mic. 
<laughs> Obviously. I love the shirt, by the way. And the pig. I love the pig. It's all about love. Yeah. And it's pig. What do you say? Pigs fly? Anyway. So, um, what I wanted to share is communication is key. And we all communicate different key, right? Men differently than women. Um, the thing is, is that some of us talk more than others, mm -hmm. and generally, mostly women. <laughs> and um, what I have been taught is to not attack a man when he comes in the door, mm -hmm. because he's had a hard day at work, right? <coughs> so let him cool off and talk to him once he's cooled off and relaxed. Mm -hmm. And don't attack. Mm -hmm. Try and communicate effectively, mm -hmm. calmly, and um, men act like you really care. But sometimes you, you look like, you know what I'm talking about. You're the good, you're a great teacher, by the way. It's so freaking funny. I love it. Uh, this is awesome. I love this stuff. Um, but guys, we've all been in relationships, some more than others. Guys, really sit down and listen to your partner. It's so important. She may have a lot to say, and you may just like, look, just facts, man, just the facts. <laughs> you know what? It's actually somewhat true. Um, right? The and problem is because women are indirect. They meander and don't get to the point. <laughs> 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 Now, I didn't mean it exactly that way. <laughs> However, However, one of the things that we have to, and she's using some words there that I think we need to really clarify. Anytime somebody uses a word like communication and effectively, you need to ask different questions. How specifically are you communicating and what does effective actually mean? Right? Because you may, th she thinks, she knows exactly what she means by those words and you think you do. You think you know what they mean because they're a general word, but you fill in the content and that's a different class. So if you want to listen and you want to really tap into how your partner is feeling, there are certain generalities that we can observe right off the bat. In a stressful situation, the male neurology will become more global they will want you to get to the point. They will also find a cave somewhere. Because that's how we deal with shit. Right? We may, in that room, we may beat up a pillow, scream into a pillow, you know, curse our mother for letting us be born, whatever we're going to do. But we're sure as hell not going to let you see it. But guys, that's how they gauge intimacy. They gauge intimacy by when you show vulnerability. You can't do that in a male crowd. Because you do that in prehistoric days, you break out and you cry, the whole pack swarms you. It's a reptilian response. Now, again, we're, part, we're getting way off the beaten topic. Okay, but getting back to the whole relationship idea, the three magic questions, um, just to close this loop on relationship stuff, I mean, the, the, you know, in term relationship stuff. When a guy gets stressed, he gets global. He thinks in cause and effect terms. He is automatically assumes that because you're yelling and screaming at him, A, you need saving, and B, you haven't fixed the problem yet. And it's at him. Somehow, some way, he's involved. Okay? Ladies, when you get stressed, when your neurology gets stressed out, you get more specific. You need, you've solved your problems, but you need to vent. Guys, let them vent. Whether you're the source of the problem originally, and you resolve it, let them vent anyway. Know in your mind, this is where you can show strength and sensitivity and dominance by letting them vent on you, to you. I, I'd rather use the word to, but we tend to think about it as on. And let them show the strength to be calm in the face of a wave of emotion washing over you. And it's easier to do once you realize, hey, I can just change my posture. <laughs> right? And it's not about you, even when it is. It's not about you, even when it is. And be that guy. Demonstrate the strength that every woman is desperate to have in their life. That lets them know it's okay to be more feminine. 
And when you do that, you're going to be amazed at the results you get. It's counterintuitive. It's counterintuitive. It goes against everything that both, social, both sides of the socialization button have taught us. Because that whole culture, that whole machine is designed to breed starvation, hunger, and frustration into you. So you'll buy more products. You'll buy more books. You'll buy better clothes. Okay? The machine, the game is rigged, ladies and gentlemen. By Hollywood, Wall Street, movies and television. Okay? They're programming you in ways you can't possibly imagine. And some you can. Somebody had a question? I don't, I just don't see how this working, this is working. Um, every time a woman has wanted, is this thing on? Is this thing on? I think she said that a few times. <laughs> Every time I've let a woman vent me, I just became the friend that got vented to. Mm -hmm. My time wasted and nothing ever happened. Yeah. So I don't do that anymore. It's Good. Hard. It's much better to not be that, because it depends on the stage you are in a relationship. If you haven't been intimate with a woman yet and she starts venting, bad idea. Right? I'm talking about people who've gone through the rituals of becoming a relationship, going into a ongoing, somewhat long-term relationship. This is where you want to maintain and build on that relationship. The problem that we have with a lot of relationship dynamics is that once we get into that long-term relationship, we stop being the person that got them to fall in love with us in the first place. And we're programmed that way through society. Once we say, I do, we stop doing. <laughs> it's slow and insidious. It's like a time delay. But if you've been in a relationship, for a long period of time and you want to put the spark back into it, do all the things you did before you got married. Visit all those places, those memories, those feelings, that person is still there. And when you bring it back, everything will come back. Okay? That's the simplest stuff I can give you right now in the time that we have. Can we go back to this? Sure. Will that be okay? All right. Location, occasion. And again, it goes back to softening. Always tell the person why you're going to ask them what you're about to ask them. That way, everything you ask doesn't sound like an interrogation. So it's Amy, right? Yeah. So Amy, just so I can understand you better, what was, what was it that made you want to come out tonight? What brought you out here tonight? What you said about... Uh, Give her the microphone. I think, I, I think my voice turned it on very well. <laughs> you turned it on? Anyway. <laughs> it's larger now. Oh, shit. Uh, I, I have to say, I really looked at everybody's profile and I saw that everybody didn't answer the questions, by the way. And some of the people answered some really, asked some really, you know, with the profile in their questions. And I really don't get the line of flirting and showing interest. Okay. It still boggles my brain. Okay. And then, and then if, if somebody's flirting with you, you think, and then they're talking to you, investing an hour and a half or two hours of their time, mm -hmm. and then they don't ask you for your number or anything. What the hell was the point of that? And these are chicken shit. <laughs> and they're probably not worth your time. That happens to me a lot. That's happens to everybody, understand. right? There's a lot of guys who fail to, what's the word, fail to launch, <laughs> right? But it's a good question. So, so How do you know? The question I wanted to find out more Cool. Things. All right, very good. And again, because, and you came here, obviously you came here by yourself, so. Yeah. Right? So cool. So what I just did with Amy was I asked the first level of the three magic questions. I asked her why she came here tonight. What does she think about X? What does she think about Y? But I did it in a way that was soft. I pre-framed what I said. I said, just so I understand you better. Absolutely. Right. That's the point. If you soften what you do, and you come from a sincere place, and you use as many of their words in your response and in your question, as you can, it will go right in. And it will be very natural and very touching and very trust facilitating. Does that make sense? And this will be true in an intimate relationship. It will be true in a sales relationship. It will be true in a group in a situation like this, which is a little bit more difficult because every time you have your own separate words. So I have to speak in very global terms that you fill in your own content, but it's still just as true. Right? The next level of question is called career and passion. Now, in career passion questions, the thing we need to understand is this idea that in this society, in all societies that are derivatives or use our society as a foundation, you are what you do. When people, um, what's your name again? Sharon. Sharon, I'm curious, what do you do for a living? I'm an ultrasound tech. 
You're an ultrasound technician. Very, very cool. <laughs> She's not going to use it. <laughs> Fine. Jeez, you guys are getting all like micro fascist on me. Here you go, Sharon. Thank you. So she said, I am an ultrasound technician. She does not say, I do ultrasound. Anytime you hear the word, I am, what you are hearing is what we call an identity statement. It is a complex equivalence where I and my job are the same. Uh, I don't know. No. What you are hearing when you hear that identity statement is a complex equivalence. It's literally them saying, this is who I am, this is what I do, and they're the same. You are what you do in most cultures. Therefore, anytime you talk about what you do, you are talking about you at a very, very deep emotional level. We all know stories of people who've been very successful in their job, very successful in their relationships, and either they lose the job, and their life goes to shit, right? Or they lose the relationship, and their life goes to shit, and the job follows. It's because the same process is happening at both levels of reality. We identify with certain things. To her, being an ultratown technician is at the same level of, of being a part of her as her arm. And she will fight as hard to keep that I am relationship as she would her own appendage. Anything that you identify with controls you. Understand that. That's a very profound influence principle. Anything you identify with controls you. Anything you disidentify from, you gain control over. Now, how does that relate to this? You can't talk, and it, 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 the, the, the thing she does for a living is a pillar of her identity. It's something her entire worldview is built on. And there's an emotional component connected to that. Actually, I'm getting upset because you're saying technician, not a technologist. There you go, see? I didn't get it quite right, right? Okay, so a technologist. And is there a, is there a professional distinction between that so I understand better? The technician fixes the machine. Ah. So she runs them and the technician fixes them. Thank you for correcting me. Why? I didn't get the words exactly right. And that will happen, by the way. That will happen. When you give somebody their words, and that process goes into this, they will start, the floodgates will open, and they will want to give you even more, and more, and more, and they'll want to make sure you get it just right, even if you didn't ask, right? And the more they talk, the better you look. The more they talk, the better you look. When someone talks about their career, they're going to the very foundations of their identity. You cannot talk about the building blocks and emotional level of your identity without experiencing profound pleasure. You understand that? The act of talking about something that is held at an identity level creates an extreme sense of desire for connection and validation. And if they're looking at you while they're undergoing that feeling, guess who they get linked to? person they're talking to. And you don't even have to do anything else but ask the question, listen, and give their words back. Now, a lot of ladies do this all the time, which is why they can never get rid of those motherfuckers. <laughs> right? Because they're taught to do this a little better than guys are. The difference is we want to get more strategic with it. When we start talking about career and passion, we want to start about targeting positive states, positive emotions, positive ideas. If you ask somebody, tell me about, so tell me, uh, what's your name again? Sorry. Sharon, I want to say, I, was, I had it right, Sharon. So an ultrasound technologist. Did you just wake up one day and decide to be an ultrasound technologist? Or what put that idea in your head? I'm curious. Well, I worked at a bank. You worked at a bank? But, but, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I like science. I like biology. I always wanted to go into medical. Cool, science and biology. I look at science and biology, I break out in a cold sweat. 
My wife is a, has, a, has a PhD in biochem, and then she decided to quit biotech and go into chiropractic, and then acupuncture and oriental medicine. We met over a dead body. Kind of funny. <laughs> so science and technology, or science, was it science and technology? Is that what you said? Biology, yes. Biology, cool. So I'm curious, was that a, a lifelong thing from when you were a little kid, or, or what happened with that? I'm seeing what you're doing. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did you really? Did you ever experiment on like the local neighbors and shit? Yeah, but like turn them into Frankenstein. Or something? <laughs> yeah. Like cool. Test right. So what do you? I'm curious. What do you find most fascinating about about what you do? What's the most? What's the coolest part of your day? I really like looking in the body and seeing. It, it's amazing to me the machine that's working. Isn't it? Yeah, we get to see that live. You get to see it live. Did you see what happened to her face? She lit up like a Christmas tree. You see it? It's amazing. She's seeing pictures in her head. She's having feelings. Who's she looking at? She knew I was doing it. How do you feel? If you do this from an ethical, and I, I'm not doing this to make fun of Sharon at all, because she's a fascinating person, I want to know her. But most importantly, I want to know if she's someone cool. Is she someone I want to get to know better? Is she someone I want to spend more time with to let her into my world? Right? And is it okay if as I'm going through that process that I make her feel good too? Would that be a win-win? What do you think? Cool, right? Did it feel weird at all? No, it felt natural. Right? You guys knew what I, it was obvious what I was doing, right? And yet, the magic happens because we're all built in. I'm not trying to downplay your own uniqueness. You're all unique and different, but not that much, right? And again, the whole idea is, how are you unique and how do I mirror that back to you in a way that you know I get you? How do you know I understand? Because right? it doesn't matter what my intention is. What matters is what you interpret from what I do. I can scream to the, to the five fences how much I respect you and honor and validate you. But if I'm not doing it in words you can relate to those concepts, they're just going to bounce off. It will be a less than fulfilling experience. Does that make sense? Okay. Last set of questions. I actually went right to level three questions, but then I went back just to make sure that I didn't lose you in the soup. I started asking, did you grow up, you know, and uh, did you start out as a kid like waking up and doing experiments on people and things like that, right? And I went to that biology and science thing. The next level of these questions is early positive childhood experiences. Who were your friends? What did you like to do? What did you play at? Now, remember, that in addition to being an attraction generating mechanism, this goes from very, very safe to very, very intimate very quickly. It can be done in as little as 20 minutes. I don't recommend you try to do that. You do need to soften the questions. You need to avoid yes and no questions. Right? Anytime you can get them to elaborate on the information in the question that you've asked, the longer they talk, male to female, female to male, male to male, female to female, it doesn't matter. The longer they talk, the better you look. The more attractive you become. It just works that way. And you will understand that person better than anyone on the planet. And the best part is they will think that you understand them better than anyone on that planet, which is really what it's about. Okay? Now, you want to have banter, you want to be fun and playful and lighthearted. Yes? Mm -hmm. because you're trying to size up how much money they make. Uh, mm -hmm. Really, you're actually just trying to find common ground or be interested, yes. as you were saying. Yep. Um, but you, you see that wall come down when you ask for the Eject. Because they're insecure about it? They've already flagged themselves. Remember, this is a testing product. Remember I said ABT? Always be testing. 
I'm giving you the retraction generating information processing aspect of the, of the technique, but there's another side to it. There's a evaluation aspect. As these people talk, they are gonna volunteer information like it's going out of style. In fact, you're gonna lie, you guys are gonna love this one. The more into this process they get, the harder it is for them to lie to you. The harder it is for them to lie to you. Okay, and this is one, this one two, three process. The deeper that connection goes, the more they have to physically change and break the connection they've built to muster up a falsehood. Because they just don't want to do that. Right? And you'll see it. You'll see it in the nonverbals. You'll feel it. You'll hear it. Right? And we have whole, whole courses on that. And hopefully you'll come back and see that. Or you can watch them on YouTube. They're there. Let's see where I'm going. Okay, we're getting kind of kind of late. Um, so what else did I talk about that I said I was going to give you guys? You guys clear on the three magic questions? Oh, the evaluative process. If you ask them about, well, I'm curious, you know, just so I understand you, what, you know, you're, oh, you work in marketing, cool. What, what made you decide to go into marketing? Was that like something you've always wanted to do? Was this a, a, you happened on it by accident? What kind of that? Well, you know, and then again, this is where it kind of splits. If you get answers like, well, you know what? Ever since I went to school, I, my dad was in marketing, and uh, he would come home and he would tell all these stories about all these cool people that he met in all these wonderful places that he did, and we had a pretty good life. And I always worshipped my dad. I always wanted to kind of be like my dad. So I, I really kind of developed that knack for marketing, and, and it just seemed like a natural fit for me that when it was my turn to get out into the world, that you know I create my own life by, by, by embracing that marketing and going somewhere. Now, what do you feel about that person, this person that you're talking to? Who's, yeah. What kind of view, do the outlook do they have on life? Right? Are they go-getters? All right, are they someone who's gonna add value? Right, contrast it. Well, you know, my dad was in marketing, and he started his own firm, and, and uh, I never was really that interested in it, but you know, I figured it was easy money. My dad had the, com you know, my dad ran the company, and I have a lot of plans for the company, though, and, and as soon as I get, you know, out of the, the cellar, and uh, you know, I get out of rehab, um, you know, I, I'm going to take that company to big places now. You know, I know a lot of the people think that you know I get a lot of slack because I'm the boss's kid. And they're really just jealous, but I know that once I'm in charge, and Dad passes on, that uh, you know I'm going to kick some serious ass and make all those motherfuckers pay who laughed at me. <laughs> danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Right now, here's the weirdest part they'll have no idea the impact of what they just said. They will be on a roll and on a quest for validation and that shit will just pour out like spaghetti from a Ziploc bag. Okay? The question becomes, what will you do? Some of you who've done this process will tell you, you're in trance too. You have to have enough presence of mind the ability to evaluate what's going on, to say, I think my parakeets have an existential crisis. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? You have to be willing to eject, and you need to have your shit, in a row, shit handled before you take them to question level three, because that's where you cement in the attraction. You cement in the attraction by having them go and revisit early positive childhood experiences. Who were your friends? What did you play at? How many people here have ever had the experience of meeting somebody, and maybe you've only known them for a few minutes, but it seems like you've known them your whole life. It's like there's just some part of you that just reaches back and just feels that connection. How does that happen? Empathy. Huh? Empathy. Empathy? Could be. Well, when you go through level three with this process, you're actually stimulating that process. When we have people go back in time and remember a, a, an event when, they have to go all the way back. The most powerful memories that you have are your early childhood experiences. And as you go back to those early childhood experiences, they are the foundation of everything else that comes afterwards. And you are literally, by having them talk about those experiences and relate those experiences to you, you are injecting yourself into those memories. They become connected. So be very, very respectful. Because when you do this, they will become very attached. 
very attached. Okay, so have your whip and your gun. And that's how it works. Now, within that whole process, there's actually more going on. But if you just have that, the nuts and bolts of it. And every, now, there's another process that happens within this, I call it analog matching. It's like I'm talking to this young lady and she's telling me the story of her life and I'm listening and I'm paying attention to everything that comes out of her mouth. And when there are certain key phrases or words that she leans on or, or emphasizes in some way, I'm making little notes so that when it's my turn to talk, it's time for me to tell my story. Because that's what we do. Ladies, true or not true. You're with a guy, you're telling him the story about this great vacation you went on or, or this great experience you had, and the next thing that comes out of your mouth is this, your partner says, and that reminds me of when I X. Guys, true or not true, you've done the same thing, you've had the same thing happen with the ladies. What you've just experienced is what NLP calls a transderivational search. It is your brain search for meaning and, on a different level, commonality. The minute you hear a story, your brain starts looking for any analog in your, in your experience that matches. And then you just wait. <laughs> Are they done speaking yet? <laughs> Is it my turn? <laughs> and then, as soon as it's your turn, blah, 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 blah. Sorry, I had a Transylvania moment. I have three kids, right? And what happens is you tell your story. The problem is you talk too long and you don't use their words. So, when it's time to tell your story, because they expect you to talk, it's not a monologue. When it's time to tell your story, use their words to tell your story. And they will be engaged and absorbed and interested and talk for a short time. The, the rule I gave uh, this gentleman over here when he asked about the talking too long, think about the 80-20 rule, the 8-2 rule. You talk for two minutes for every eight minutes they get to talk. Right? So they've gone on for eight minutes about something that's powerful and exciting and moving in their life and it's your turn to tell a similar story or master analog. Talk for about two minutes and then ask them another question and let them talk. That's just a rule of thumb. Use your, uh, use your best judgment, right? Now, another thing that comes up a lot is how do you keep out of the friend zone? A, don't let them be, don't be their freaking therapist. At any stretch of this process, avoid being a therapist. Your job is not to be their therapist. Your job is to find out if they have a life worth being a part of. Or actually, if they have a life that you would like to be part of your life. And if the answer to that is no, Go. <laughs> right? Let them down easy. Right? But be definitive. It's your life. I've seen people waffle on this and wind up in relationships that they were miserable in because they forgot the rule. What's the rule? Really? <laughs> Always be testing. Right? Always be testing. Be curious about that person. Create connection with that person. But you're always, at this part of the process, you are seeking commonality and finding out if this person is going to add value to your life or a drain on your resources. You will save yourselves thousands of dollars in wardrobes, makeovers, crash diets, right? cars. Find out what's important to that person. Use their words to do it. Keep them fun. And remember that attraction is generated by banter, playfulness, and most importantly, a status gap. What the hell does that mean? It means if you just get rapport with somebody, you're usually going to wind up in the friend zone because there's no dynamism to the relationship. There's no zing. I'm using that Transylvania movie again, right? There's no zing, right? <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. Right. But that social status thing is a reptilian response. Remember, at the reptile brain, rejection from the group is equivalent to extinction. Understand that? You will feel a physical pain at the threat of rejection, but everybody feels it, even the person rejecting you. However, we are taught to sort for the high status members, because we also know that society protects its high status members. 
Why? They have access to more resources. They bring more value and enhance the survivability of the group. So let me ask you a quick question. This is Joe versus the volcano moment. Okay, I'm in deep shit. All right. Nobody understands the reference. I'm in deep trouble. You guys know Joe versus the volcano? All right. When the volcano god is angry and the village must sacrifice to the volcano god, who do they throw in? The chief? The medicine man? Or the cute virgin? Why? Or what they do is they get sneaky. They king for a day. In the volcano you go. Right? Why? Because society protects its high status members. Now, guys, think about this for a moment. And ladies, think about this in terms of a purely survival response. If you are programmed to survive at all costs, to procure the greatest amount of resources, to, to guarantee the survival of your offspring, who would you want to ally yourself with? The janitor? <laughs> the head of the army? Or the emperor, right? That's right. We, as a reptilian species, know this, okay? And so we've evolved in such a way that we are predisposed to sorting for things that indicate higher social value. Now, what we use to sort for that is now largely context dependent. Prior to the advent of the technology that we're dealing with, it was based on who was bigger and stronger and more athletic. And in certain contexts, we still sort for that. But it's also going down to who has more money, who has more intelligence, who has a better sense of humor. Some janitors need lawsuits. Absolutely, baby. <laughs> Absolutely. But I'm not talking about in terms of what's morally right or wrong. Okay? Sorry? Yeah, we got to remember that uh, the, the reptile doesn't care about, again, the reptile brain does not care about right or wrong, does not care about good or evil. It cares about pushing the genes forward. Now, it will wrap emotions and rationalizations around it like a pearl, like a, 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 an oyster wraps a, a, a substance around a pearl to smooth it out. But at the end of the day, what really created that beautiful pearl that you're seeing on the outside was something that was pissing off the oyster on the inside. Right? True, not true. Right? So many times the rationalizations that we generate for why we do the things we do are just that. They're stories that we generate to justify to the outside world the behaviors that we're engaging in and to ourselves. I'm a hypnotist. People lie to me all day long. They don't know they're lying because they're lying to themselves too. All right? Again, I, I peer into the hearts and minds of human beings every single day. And there's one thing I can tell you, that inside every single one of us is a scared little child terrified of being alone and desperate to be accepted. Desperate. And I spend a lot of time reconnecting those parts so they get that. That's what I do every single day. I'm going to make you guys a promise. I promised you guys a list of stuff. And it is late and I want to get you guys out of here because I've gone way too long. So I'm going to give you guys a free gift. First one is, everybody who came out tonight, just to walk into my office is $175 an hour. For everybody who came out tonight, braved the traffic, put up with my substandard chocolate. I'm really upset because they discontinued the brand I normally get and I had a substitute. I'm really upset because I had it down to a science. I knew exactly what order and sequence of chocolate you were going to eat. You were going to eat the dark chocolate Kit Kats first. Then you were going to eat the white chocolate Kit Kats. And you were going to leave the fucking milk chocolate for me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you got it coming out of my ears. But they discontinued that, so I have to start all over again. But I have here a list of approachability secrets for women. I will give everybody a PDF with this on it. Okay? I also have here a list of the top 16 flirting signals that you, a, man, a woman can use for a man that go from the least come here and have a good time, big boy, to the most let's get it on now, right? And uh, again, these are actually taken from a book, uh, How to Make Anyone Fall in Love With You. I think it's by Leo Loundis, um, but I will send you a list of those. And these are things that you can do in addition to everything else. 
that help you to signal to the opposite gender, especially guy, ladies signaling to guys, in a way that they might be able to perceive a little bit more clearly that you're interested. Remember, late guys, 60% of all approaches are initiated by women, but they don't go up to you and go, hey, big boy, I want to look at the funky, right? They don't do that. What they do is they engineer the opportunity for you to approach. So how many of you guys have ever been in a bookstore and a, an attractive woman walks into the area and you're sitting there reading Sports Illustrated, Popular Mechanics, and there's a very attractive woman just kind of hanging out for about 30 seconds. And you're like, oh, she's nice. And you're back to the sports section. <gasps> right? <laughs> now you hear every woman and I'm going, oh, you're missing it. Because what's obvious to the females is not so obvious to us. Right? Anybody here ever been in, in a room with a woman who did not like them? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I get the shrinkage every time I think of it. Here's the rule. When a woman is not liking you, she's not digging you at all, she will either literally or metaphorically remove you from her environment. Okay, you could be standing right behind her and there's like nothing there. She does not acknowledge you at all. Here's the corollary to that. Women do not pay attention to people they're not interested in. Ever. When an attractive woman wanders into your area and she stays there for any length of time, she's engineering an opportunity for you to separate yourself from the pack. And you have, about, you have three glances to make it work. So you, first time she walks in, she makes eye contact, she smiles, and she goes, that's one. Second eye contact, that's two. Third eye contact, three, loser. <laughs> and guy's going, oh, Nurse Nancy, Nurse Nancy. Right? He's, he's looking into his, his Sports Illustrated or his, he, because he doesn't register the fact that a female came into an area where a female wouldn't normally go. Now this goes all the way back to the playground. Okay, I can't really go into it unless you guys want to hear the story. Yep. Yeah. You got me a story? Yeah. I'll be here all fucking night. All right. <laughs> it's okay though. It's okay. Um, but anyway, uh, getting back to the free gift. Anybody who wants to, who came out tonight, who sat through all of this meandering, free 30-minute one-on-one time with me in my clinic in Solana Beach. Uh, I don't promise to fix all your problems, but I do promise to listen, answer any questions you have fill in the blanks. If there's any way that I can help you, either professionally or whatever, I'll tell you. If there isn't, I'll tell you that too. Uh, there's no obligation for anything. We're gonna get this video up on YouTube as fast as we can. We'll get the PDFs out for you ASAP. But I highly recommend you, you take the opportunity to, to come out and talk and, and, and get to know me, and I'd like the opportunity to get to know you. We don't have a lot of slots because I'm doing a lot of traveling. We just opened our sixth NLP Power chapter across the country. I am really, really excited about that. Um, you can give it a clap. because <laughs> Don't give me the clap, give it a clap. So all you gotta do to claim your free gift is go see uh, my daughter Tracy and our lovely Linda over there. She will help you get it on the schedule. Also, um, we have a few things coming up. For those of you, how many people here like free food? How many people here like really good free food? Okay, December 12th. Mark that date on your calendar. My clinic is celebrating, it'll be, will be open 10 years on March 14th, 2015, or 2016, but we're having a Christmas party and it's an open house and everybody's invited, lots of free food. We have a cool balcony overlooking the ocean. Uh, we'll be doing, I'll be doing some free talks there. I'll be doing one on instant emergency pain relief. We'll be doing some other really cool talks. I'd, uh, I'd invite all of you to come out and just hang out with us and, and get to know us and stuff like that. Um, on February 14, 2016, Eddie didn't know I was going to talk about this, but uh, there's actually a big ro day of romance here, a romance gala that Mr. Ed is going to be hosting. And that is, is it, is it free, Ed? Or how, how does that work? What? what? <laughs> Just some coming events. All right, well, if you're interested in coming to that event, there's a whole, a whole bunch of free things planned and, and other stuff. I think there's gonna be speakers. I don't know. Didn't you tell me about this? No, we have a Love and Romance Expo coming up. Yes. Is that what you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, Love and Romance Expo. Oh, okay, that's February 21st. I 
Oh, 21st, I'm sorry, my bad. Love and Romance Expo, February 21st. Yeah, I'm doing my shit before Valentine's Day, because I get it. You understand? I'm ahead of you. And that's what I'm saying. Uh, Under Your Chairs is a, a, t a talk I just decided to do. Uh, it's called uh, Real World Romance, Rapid Attraction Secrets. It, it covers all of the material we've covered Night Plus. It gives you the entire system from meeting to dating, mating, and relating. Um, and what we're doing is, uh, normally to walk into that training, it's 975. Anybody who wants to, to sign up early today, you can also see Tracy. We're gonna give you a fast action early bird discount of 297, just for coming out tonight, okay? Yeah, it's a massive discount, because I'm gonna create a product out of it. And I like to have big rooms when I do products, because it brings the best out of me, right? So, um, so what I will do is I will get you the PDFs of the things I promised to give you and I will make them downloadable from the NLP Power website. It's nlppower.com. The video will be up as soon as I can get it there. Eat as much chocolate as you can because I do not want to take it home. Okay, a couple of things. If you had a good time, how many of you had a good time tonight? Raise your hand. Thank you. If you had a good time, post good things to the meetup. If you didn't have a good time, post to somebody else's. Um, and uh, we have another one coming up in two weeks. It's called uh, Secrets of Personal Transformation. And uh, we're gonna show you more about how to control the neurology, how to program yourself to use the law of attraction. I may even show you how to change water into wine. All right, not exactly like that. But if I could show you how to put energy in water so much so that you could palpably test and, ch test and, and sense the taste, the change in taste of it, would that be cool? then that's what we'll do. So by all means, tell your friends, post good things to the meetup. Thank you all for coming out. See Tracy for your gifts.